Folks, before we get started on uh, driver availability for, uh, for Kyle, we have a special presentation from uh, our Turkey Night folks. Let me say a couple words. Have a seat. Um, this is a presentation. The, the Agajanian family and Agajanian Promotions has been uh, promoting the Turkey Night Grand Prix. It's an annual event that dates back to the 1930s. So uh, JC, my father, picked up the uh, Turkey Night race. And in 1955, it's been the Agajanian years of the Turkey Night Grand Prix. And uh, Tony Stewart, uh, who's a great a great racer on dirt and everything else. When he won Turkey Night, he said, except for the championship, he said this was one of my most important wins because it's something he really wanted to do. And now Kyle has won Turkey Night, and I have a special presentation for him that I'll be happy to make. All right? This is, this is the uh, Turkey Night Grand Prix jacket. It's got Kyle's name on it, and it's embroidered beautifully on the back. Thank you. And you're more than welcome. You deserve it, man. You kicked everyone's butt. <laughs> Sam, why don't you come up for a second? Sam Cascanian, you know Sam. And we're, we're real proud to be here, and uh, we're thankful for Kyle's time and his team letting him uh, be here when we sneak in and pick you up and, yeah, and you. take some of your time. So no, congratulations, thank you. Kyle. A lot. Thanks a lot. We're, we're real thrilled to yeah, get you I'll that. Yeah, I'll be back again, so thanks. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Great. Yeah, and yeah. you'll be back again? I plan on Ladies it. and gentlemen, you, you heard that. <laughs> thanks sure, again, thanks. Kyle. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, Dave. All right. We will continue with our media availabilities here in advance of Sunday's Auto Club 400 at Auto Club Speedway. We are now joined by the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series points leader, Kyle Larson, driver of the number 42 Target Chevrolet for Chip Ganassi Racing. Uh, Kyle, you've also finished second in the three most recent uh, Monster Energy Series races. And I uh, ran the fastest time in practice today, so it looks like you're going to try to end that streak here by visiting Victory Lane when you return to California. Um, and you've also had some success here winning the NASCAR Xfinity Series race back in 2014 for your first win in that series. So why don't you just talk about the strong start to uh, 2017 and uh, coming home to California for this weekend's race. Yeah, it's definitely been a, uh, a good start to the year. Um, you know, we've, we've had a shot to win, you know, every race this season. Um, so, you know, that's been really happy about that. Uh, you know, California Speedway, uh, you know, I'm from California, so it's kind of like my home race. You know, it's a long ways from Sacramento, but uh, still feels somewhat like home, uh, getting to see lots of friends and stuff out here. So uh, it would be nice to to uh, you know get a win here. Um, you know, in the the second place streak I have going, but uh, yeah, no, it's been it's been really cool um, to be contending like we have been. Uh, hopefully, we can continue to have speed in our race cars. I've been really happy with everybody at our. Uh, Target Chip Nasty Racing Shop, uh, Credit One Bank, everybody that, that puts all their time and effort into to letting you know, Jamie and myself uh, have some fun and go fast and, and challenge for wins. So I've um, been extremely happy and, and would like to uh, you know, be winning right now, but uh, being the point leader is, is awesome. All right, we will open it up to questions for Kyle. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic. We'll start here with Holly and then go over here to the middle. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. Hi, Kyle. I, uh, I remember your rookie season and you winning the Xfinity race and then coming so close in this race. Now to be points leader, just kind of, you know, what is that like for you? I mean, it's very early in the season and you've, you know, you've, you're already there. You've, you've gotten. Yeah, it's, uh, it's neat to be leading the points this early in the year. Um, I've, you know, never been, I know I've won, you know, a handful of championships throughout my, my racing, but I've never been one to be a points racer or, be as consistent as I've been, and, and going in into this year, I, I made it a goal of mine to be more consistent uh, this year and um, make less mistakes. And you know, it's only been four races, but we've been off to a good start on on you know limiting our mistakes and um, you know, running up front, and, and you know that's putting our or help put ourselves in position to win uh, each race this season. So um, you know, like I said, just been really proud of everybody on our race our race team and. Uh, happy with you know kind of how I've been performing. Um, been trying to work a little bit harder uh, this year, and it seems we all be paying off. I think Holly had a follow up. And I just as a follow up to that, 
even with your runner-up finishes or something coming so close as you did at the Daytona 500, you've really had, um, really exhibited just a, a, a good, for lack of a word, personality about it. You've, you've handled it all so well coming that close. How do you do that as opposed to, you know, being mad and kicking <coughs> and, you know, whatever? How, how are you handling it so well? Well, I think it's easy to handle it in the Cup Series because it's so extremely tough to run up front. So to be consistently up front is something that's hard to do, or, or it's been hard for us and our, our race team. So um, we've never had this speed before. So it's, uh, at least since I've been in the, the Cup Series. So it's something that's a little bit new and different to me and, and makes it a whole lot of fun to come to the racetrack. So um, yeah, I, I don't know, you know, seconds are not wins, but they're not thirds either. So um, it's, it's not too bad. I'll come here to the middle and then go to Lee. Kathy Brown, Penny outside the box. Every year you have seemed to improve, and, and Jamie has always been a, a, a contender every single year. What do you think has finally clicked with the two of you this year because you're just doing that much better? I think our race cars are just, like I said, way better than they've uh, been in a long time. So, um, you know, I, I don't think, I think, you know, Jamie and I maybe have, have added a little bit to it, but I feel like our race cars are just the main reason why uh, we're running a lot better uh, this season. So um, everybody's so good in this series that um, you know, a lot comes down to how well your race cars are and how well your race team performs. And um, you know, we've kind of got it all going on right now. So it's, it's pretty, pretty cool to show up to the racetrack. I know Jamie and I are both having a blast right now. We'll go to Lee. LeeSpencerMotorsport.com. Can you talk a little bit about how your relationship with Chad Johnston has evolved over the last, you know, having one year under your belt to work with him? Yeah, I get along great with Chad. Um, we have similar personalities, kind of quiet, but uh, also have a funny personality. Um, and, you know, get just getting to spend a, all of last year with him uh, and then, you know, kind of one full off season together has you know, been good. Um, you know, last year, the you know, first half of last year, you know, him and, and Phil, my engineer, were, were just, I think, trying to kind of fill me out and, and learn me a little bit and learn my communication, how, you know, it may be different than other drivers they've been with. And um, so I think that's why we started the year off slow last season. Um, and then, you know, having that full year and, and all that and, and getting our cars better throughout the year uh, has really, you know, helped for, for you know, this season. So, um, yeah, I know that, yeah, they can kind of look at notes that, they had from the, the second half of last season and, and take them to the tracks where we have ran bad or had ran bad last year and, and be a lot better this time around. We'll stay over to your right, Kyle, and then we'll come up front. Robbie Mays, MRN. Kyle, uh, after Sunday, we conclude the West Coast Wing, head back east to Martinsville Speedway next weekend. Uh, you've had some good success there. You've had some struggles there as well. Talk about uh, your mindset uh, going into Martinsville next week. Yeah, Martinsville is a, uh, it's definitely my, my worst race track probably my least favorite racetrack. Um, but we did have a good run there last year, finished third and, and maybe just outside the top 10 the second time we were there. Um, so a lot better than I've ran there in years before. So I'm actually excited to get to Martinsville. Um, I feel like I've become a better short flat track racer. Uh, I, I think I maybe understand kind of what I need throughout practice to help me in the race a little bit better than I had in the past. So. Um, we just got to wait and see. Uh, we got to get through this week. Hopefully you get a, another solid run, hopefully a win, and then uh, go on to Martinsville and, and uh, just be mistake free. We'll come back up front here. Kay Presto, Cars and Competition. You're doing very well this year, Kyle, but tell us about the difficulty of adapting to stage racing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not uh, it's not difficult to adapt to. I mean, the race lengths are still the same distance. Um, we just kind of have a uh, set caution period. So um, almost, it honestly probably makes the race easier to run because uh, you can break it up. Um, I, I feel like the racing's been you know more intense at the end of the stages, um, especially I, I guess you know last week the second stage was the only one that to me wasn't uh, that intense from from my seat. Um, towards the end of it, but every other stage has been uh, pretty intense. So I've liked the stage racing a lot. I don't know, I haven't seen much of the fan opinion on it, but uh, 
talking to all the other drivers and, and you know, my opinion on it is uh, it's been a great change to our sport and uh, you know, happy that they've, they've done it. How about the passing? Does it make it more difficult or easier? The stages make it stages, passing? Yeah. Oh, I passing. don't know. I, I don't know. know. Passing is still tough. I don't think stage racing makes passing any easier or difficult, but uh, we've got less downforce on the cars this year, and um, you know I think that that helps passing a little bit. Um, thankfully for us, we've been up front for most of these races and haven't had to worry about passing a whole lot of cars, but um, yeah, it's been fun. We'll go all the way in the back. Jay Ari Barr, California Life. Kyle, just kind of curious with the success you're having this year, will that kind of curtail some of your dirt track racing? And specifically, will you try to visit the Knoxville Nationals again this year? <coughs> um, yeah, no, I watched Race Hub last week, and uh, I know Chad Johnston you know, in one of his interviews said I was you know, more focused this year, and uh, Wally said, yeah, you know, he's not running as many sprint car races this year. I'm still running as many sprint car races as I ran last year. I'm racing, you know, in less than a week now in Placerville, so. Um, it'd be cool to go to the World Outlaw Race as being the, the Cup Series point leader. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I love racing sprint cars, and you know, I'm allowed to run 25 a year, so I get 25 in. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I won't be able to run Knox and Nationals this year. Um, our schedule worked out perfect last year. I could run almost all of Ohio Speed Week and all of Knox and Nationals. But uh, this year, all I'll probably be able to do is Oskaloosa on whatever day of the week that is, and then I could run a prelim night of Knox and Nationals, but I definitely wouldn't be able to run Saturday. I'll come over here to the left. Uh, yeah, hi, Richard Marcella, Entertainment Sports Today. Mr. Agajani, it's nice to see you again, my friend. Mr. Larson, we got this track out there, the surface, people seem to love it. What is your feelings about it? Fontana? Fontana. Um, yeah, it's, it's always a lot of fun to go to a war out uh, surface. Um, Fontana is one of my favorite because there's so many different lanes to choose from and the seams are, are tricky. Um, yeah, it's a super wide racetrack and you can run anywhere from the bottom to the top. So um, you got to be conservative on your tires um, and, and be patient up against the wall but also aggressive. So yeah, it's a intense racetrack. Uh, the race has always felt fairly long because it's so demanding. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, I wish there's more racetracks like this. We'll go to Wolfgang. He's bringing a mic. Uh, Kyle, I have a technical question. Maybe you can give me some explanation for that. What I know, the aero package in any race car is different under very hot conditions like last week in Phoenix, cooler conditions like here. Can you give some more explanation as you have to work on a new setup or aero package when the weather is cooler or hotter? Uh, well, I mean. Phoenix, all right, so Phoenix is like, a, you know, it's been repaved not too long ago. So even though it was hotter last week, it still has 100 times more grip than this place does when it'd be zero degrees outside. So, um, and, you know, that's a mile racetrack versus a two-mile racetrack. It, the setups are just it, polar opposite, you know, different. So um, I don't, listen, I drive the... I drive the car. I hold the steering wheel and press the gas and brake. So I don't. I don't worry about setups. But uh, I'd imagine I, I would say the setups are way different. We'll go to Lee. Lee Spencer Motorsport.com. We all know your passion for open wheel racing, but if it really starts getting to the point where the championship looks like something that could be a possibility, do you think that Chip might, you know, change that 25 race um, stipulation? Um, no, because all my dirt racing is pre pretty much done before the chase start or the playoffs start anyways. Um, midweek racing kind of happens up to Knoxville Nationals and then the midweek racing kind of goes away. So I, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I don't think there's, there's, mm, yeah, there's no races I can run during the playoffs. Um, but as soon as the season's done, I'll be at the uh, Turkey Night. Huh? Uh, no, I mean, I mean, I don't think the World Outlaws would have planned it that way. They just don't have any midweek races. No, like I said, there's no midweek races really to catch throughout uh, the Midwest or anything. Um, yeah, it's all kind of done. There's a lot of midweek racing in June and July, and, and so that's probably when I get most of my racing in. Mm -hmm. We'll go to Kelly. 
KellyCrandallRacer.com. Kyle, being the point leader and running well, Jamie's running well, um, it said, I think the statistic was last week that you're the first Ganassi driver since Sterling Marlin in 2002 to lead the points at this point in the season. And there was a lot of guys from Ganassi who were really pumped up about that, it seemed like, on social media. Is there a such thing as momentum right now? You said you and Jamie are having fun and, and running well is great, but from a team perspective and the guys at the shop who are there grinding it out, is there a such thing as momentum for them? Oh, for sure. Momentum's huge in, in our sport especially, but, but every sport. Um, yeah, it, that's a uh, really cool um, to be you know, the only other Ganassi driver to be leading the points. Uh, I've never got to meet Sterling, but uh, from the stories Jamie's told me, he's a <laughs> character. So, um, yeah, just uh, I haven't been to the shop because uh, I've been out west the whole the whole s uh, swing here. But um, looking forward to getting back there and, and seeing all the guys and gals that are working on the cars and, and thanking them for for all their hard work. I'm sure they've listened to all my interviews and stuff, and I try to make it a point to thank them in those. Um, but yeah, momentum's big, and and uh, I just hope we can carry the momentum. All right, final question from Holly. Thank you. Kyle, um, could you just talk about a lot of you young drivers are really challenging, you know, up top in the in the standings right now so much, you know, it, there's not a whole let's get into the season and see where everyone is. Right off the bat, you've got you and Ryan Blaney and um, Chase Elliott. If you could just talk about that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool um, to see kind of where the sport's at right now. Um, you know, there's, you know, us three that you just named, Austin, uh, Eric Jones, Suarez, uh, Chris Buescher, um, you know, there's a lot of young time. I mean, <laughs> Joey Logano is only a couple years older than I am. So uh, it's it's really cool to see kind of the future of the sport and, and them all running up front. So uh, I'm sure NASCAR is really happy about that. And uh, it's it's fun to race with all of all of them on the racetrack because I, I, I feel like we've all gotten a, a little bit more added aggression and excitement. So, yeah. Um, and then, you know, personality-wise, uh, the young guys are all pretty fun. Uh, Blaney is always on some sort of social media doing PR stuff for NASCAR, which is funny to watch. Austin, you know, is a, a fiery guy and, and really good for the sport. Uh, and then, you know, Chase and myself are kind of more laid back, I feel like. So, um, yeah, it's, it's cool to see. And, uh, you know, Joey likes to f fight. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we're in a great spot. All right, Kyle. Well, thanks for joining us this afternoon, and good luck this weekend. Thanks.